how to get an A on your first semester final. Um, anyway, these are the directions so far that I have. I may update them and add a couple of little things if it seems like something may be unclear. Um, so anyway, let's just go through them. Uh, essentially, what you guys are doing for your final is the, the same thing we did for, I think it was task six, where it was uh, editing MIDI and audio. And now you're just going to be doing it individually and uh, under a time limit. So if you look at my clock right now, it's 12.52. So let's see how long this takes me to do it. Um, I don't see it taking me too long. Um, these sessions are edited a little bit better than the, the ones we did uh, in class, so it should be a little bit easier to move along. Um, so if you look at the directions here on the left side, uh, this is the directions that you'll probably be handed. And over here on the right, this information will be listed on the board. Depending on which session group uh, you're going up with, you may get um, an A or a B version. And this is just so that it's real clear and that you don't try copying somebody else's work from another period. Um, all of the uh, sessions will be labeled individually and they'll all be different songs and require slightly different edits. So um, there will be absolutely no way to cheat on this uh, test. So let me go through the directions in these tasks. You'll be editing MIDI data and creating drum parts for an assigned song. You will be required to contribute and present the instructor how the session is routed and edited. You'll export one version of the session to be graded. Really, I'm going to be going around and grading them, so you're going to be leaving them uh, open on your uh, computer and I'll run around and just basically either give you a check, a plus, check plus or check minus depending on how far along you got and how well you're, uh, you completed all of the uh, required directions. So the first thing you're going to do is create a session like we normally do and this one's going to be called final MIDI drums and it's going to go in your period folder so students and then whatever period is where you're going to put it and it'll be uh, um, and on this one you will have your whole last name so make sure you include that and make sure you have your period number. Just in case I don't get around to grading everybody's, I need to be able to find it really quick. So make sure you put it in the appropriate folder. So right now, I'm doing mine uh, in Pro Tools 9, but it's not going to be a whole lot different than what you guys are doing. So I'm going to create a session. It's going to be 24-bit, 44-1, wave. And for me, I've got a bunch of different drives going on. So I'm just going to make one here. So if I name it correctly, it'll be final. MIDI, drums, period, home, and my last name, carry on. So this is my version. Uh, another thing that I'm probably going to want to include is which version I'm doing. So today I'm going to be demoing 1B. So if you get in the second testing group um, of the first period doing this, you guys will get exactly the tutorial of how to do it. Um, all right, so that's set up. My name is correct. I've got a blank session. Um, it's 24-bit, 44-1 sample rate and wave format. Um, I only need headphones on this. I'm not going to need uh, an inter interface unless I'm on station number, what is it, 13, I think, has the bad headphone jack. So that one we may need to plug in a, a, an interface, and I'll help out with that uh, just so that we have audio coming out in case you need it. But really, I mean, you're not really going to need to listen to what is going on uh, with your session a whole lot. If you just follow the directions, you can just push play and you'll probably be pretty good. Uh, now we're going to import the audio file. And in this case, the audio file that I'm going to be importing is going to be file 1B. So file, import, audio. Um, on your computers, it will be in your 00, zero students, 00ROP zero, folder. Uh, on my computer, it's somewhere slightly different. Um, and this is because I made it on this computer, so I'm going to be doing 1B, and I'm importing the MP3 that's, uh, it says final 1B MP3. And I'm going to pop that guy in there. It'll ask me if I want to save it. Um, I'm going to want it in my audio files folder for that session that I just created, so the default folder is fine. And we're going to put it on a new track. Um, now that I got that, I am going to create a stereo fader. You can do it with a shortcut. Command Shift N, or you can go up here, Track, New, Stereo, and it's going to be a master fader that I'm going to want. Uh, I'm going to create a click track, the shortcut, the easy way to do it, Track, Create Click Track, and now it'll give me this one. I like my click, click track all the way at the top, so I'm going to move it up there. Um, and I got to set my session tempo. If this is all correct, I should be in bars and beats up here at the top. 
and I should be able to see my tempo right here on my session it's gonna be this green line if I double click this little red arrow I get a tempo change window and in this case for this particular uh, session that I'm doing the speed I'm going to put it at is if I look at my sheet over here this is the stuff that's gonna be written on the board uh, I'm gonna change my session tempo to 160 at the start and then the audio um, file is going to start at 21000 in grid mode. So we should all know what that means by now. So to change my tempo, I'm going back to Pro Tools, 160. And if I'm in grid mode, which I am up here, I'll be starting this. And you see my clicks already are exactly lined up. Now if I push play from the very beginning, of the session it might seem crazy what I'm about to say they line up pretty close my clicks are just a tiny bit behind and if you zoom in you can see that that's because where the actual grid starts and where the audio file is is slightly different so if I if I'm set up correctly and my nudge is set to like uh, 10 milliseconds like it is right now that's my computer's default um, when I'm editing I just tap it maybe once, maybe even twice, and I'll be really right on the clicks. It might seem crazy now that I know that's correct, I can just mute out my click. And I know that everything I import, MIDI data-wise, will be lined up exactly correctly. And if I look at my grid at the top here, this is where the second measure starts, and that's exactly where my audio files start right now. So, so far, I've got it all done. Um, so yes, uh, in the directions it says, if you read them correctly, it says align the audio in slip mode so that the clicks of the audio track begin at measure. And that was measure. If we look over here, I had, I wanted two. So the beginning beat one of measure two in grid mode. Uh, so, and then it also says it may require the use of a uh, trimmer tool, which I use, and then I, I j actually, I didn't even do that. I just nudged it um, to make it line up so that the clicks are exactly w with the audio track. Now, I've got to import the MIDI tracks um, that correspond to the audio file. So, let's go and do that now. We're back in Pro Tools file. Now, we're going to import MIDI. see where they are these are going to be in the basically the same folder that the audio file came from so now instead of importing final 1b mp3 I'm going to import final 1b MIDI and it's going to give me some options I am going to want to import um, it into a new track and at the beginning of the session start uh, because I have the tempo already mapped out that the MIDI was at it doesn't matter if I have this clicked or not I'm going to try clicking it just to see if it makes a difference and I'll import the key signature so these are the, the tempo map and the key signature we'll see if it makes a difference if I do it that way or not but now I've got all these beautiful MIDI files these are all drum loops um, that are correct and let's see what what's my next direction if I go back to my list we're right here create a stereo auxiliary track and apply the boom plugin with the patch and over here I have set the boom to 80 so basically wherever the blanks are I mean it's gonna be written on the board and it's just gonna be depending on which session you have um, to work with so we're gonna put 80 on our boom and it's gonna be in a stereo uh, auxiliary track so let's do those steps back to Pro Tools shortcut command shift N one stereo auxiliary track I don't need anything other than that right now. So here it is. If I go to my mix window, right now I have the narrow mix on. There's the big one. And insert up here, multi-channel instrument. I just need to make boom. The patch that I needed again for this was 80. So I change right here, drum kit to 80. And now I've got the correct sounds, and all of a sudden, all of those MIDI sounds that I had going, instead of them being grayed out, 
they all know exactly what they should be doing and where they should be sending their data. Piece of cake. Brilliant. Um, all right, we've got that dialed in. We're going to need to route all of the outputs of the MIDI to Boom. And by default, these ones, because I made them in Pro Tools session, they already knew what to look for, so that I don't even have to change anything, but you could just double check right here at the bottom of your MIDI tracks, the drum tracks that we imported. They should all be routed to Boom, and in this case, because there's only Boom, it's one, one, uh, one plug in a Boom open is Boom 1-1. One -one. And so they're all going to be playing correctly. And the next direction is going to be route all the uh, the outputs. We did that right now. And in grid mode, set the largest increment of one measure and place the loops in the following sequential order. Do not overlap and, and do them basically how they're listed on the board. Over here, this is my order that I would be doing them in. Okay, so it's going to be one MIDI one, two MIDI twos, a MIDI three, four MIDI twos, four MIDI threes, four MIDI fours, and a MIDI five. So I go back to this guy. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can see what my session looks like. And I'm going to put them in that order. So I have a printout in front of me that I'm looking at. Um, you guys would just be able to look at it from straight off the board. Or maybe I'll actually make you a copy of the sheet. Um, that might actually be easier. Uh, so we got one MIDI one. We're just going to leave that one exactly where it is. When that one ends, now we're going to have two MIDI twos. And you'll notice up here, I am in grid mode. I just made turned on my lines. And it is in one measures or one bar is what it says right here at the top. I'm going to leave that. So I've got one of those. Uh, and I need two. So I'm going to duplicate it. Command D. And now I've got two MIDI 2s. Now I'm going to go back and do four MIDI 3s. This is my MIDI 3. So when that one ends, this one starts. Duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. There's four. Um, now we need four more MIDI 2s. So I can copy these two. And just when those end, bam, this guy starts. And I could just do that again. And now I've got one, two, three, four of those guys in sequential order. Um, now I need four MIDI 3s. So I can just copy these guys. I got four MIDI 3s. Now I just need four MIDI 4s and four MIDI 5s. These are my MIDI 4. Ooh, this one looks like it may be wrong in my session. I'm going to have to go through and fix those in your, your guys' files. But it should be one bar less, so they should all be the same length, I think. And I need four of those. And then I need four of these, and it should be done. And well, that's without even listening to any of it. I just am assuming that because my edits are correct and I did this all in grid mode, um, when I push play... It should sound right. It might seem crazy what I'm about to say. Sunshine, she's here. You can and I can see that my plugin is making, uh, definitely making noise. Over here is my audio file. Right now I'm on my MIDI 2s. Okay, now if you see, I'm clipping over here. My drums don't sound as loud as they should be, so I'm going to turn down the audio file a little bit. And I should make the clipping a little bit less. So right now I've got my uh, audio file at minus 2.8, and that sounds pretty good to me. I could maybe even go minus 3. And if I'm still clipping over here, I could always put a plug-in in that would fix that. Uh, you guys have Maxim, I think, on your computer. So I'll just adjust this guy. Set out my ceiling at like minus four, minus two. And now I'm not clipping and it's hitting hard. Oh, I shouldn't be clipping.
So it's going through. Oh, so far, every, all my transitions sound good. And we might as well listen to the rest of the song. And that's it. So that was my track with the drums all the way through. Now to bounce this out, the easiest way is going to be to select wherever the, the longest file is, which in this case is going to be this guy, and select it all the way from the area that you want to bounce out from. So we probably, if we want, we could take the clicks at the beginning, or we could even start right at the beginning of the measure three, because the very first measure right here from two to three is just those clicks, and we may not want to hear those every time we play it back, like in our car or something. And then I go to slip mode, just select from there to there. Then to bounce this thing out, just select bounce to disk. It'll ask me all of my options. I'm probably going to want to save it as an MP3. Interleaved. And then I would click bounce. And it'll ask me where I want to save it. Right now I'm working in my folder that I just made. You guys will probably default to your bounced out folder, which would be fine. And then I would just name it whatever the file is supposed to be. File. And there we go. In two minutes, I'd have a bounced out folder. So then you would just raise your hand or sit tight, get a hold of me, and I would come basically just look over that you did all of your edits correct. Um, and I'll just look that it looks more or less something like this. I'll look over that your routing is correct, that you have the correct plugin, correct setting. And that's basically it. So if you have any questions, feel free to talk to me between now and next week when we take our final. And of course, you're uh, welcome to have one sheet of notes on how to do it. But it's got to be all handwritten or typed, and it's got to have your name on it. Okay, so that's the rule on that. Um, so yeah, feel free to watch this video over and over. Take notes. I think I explained most of the shortcuts, but if there's one that I did that um, maybe I didn't explain, just come find me and ask me. Alrighty, and good luck.